I hope that you learned from your second assignment and have got some feeling now how to make a simple LCA. Now we will go further in the explanation on how to deal with the end of life in the case of a cradle to grave LCA and how to deal with circular cradle to cradle systems. Be aware that circular systems are a bit more complex than linear systems. When you don't understand, just stop this video and play the difficult part again. So far, we learned that LCA is a matter of applying the right lines in Excel tables, multiplication and adding up, just like cost calculations. In circular systems, this is also the case, but the issue is that you must know how to define your system and where to allocate eco costs. The cradle to cradle philosophy is about reducing waste to an absolute minimum. A holistic approach is called the butterfly diagram, marketed by the Ellen MacArthur Foundation. The butterfly shows circularity in the biosphere at the left and in the technosphere at the right. In the biosphere, most systems are circular as such, since Mother Nature is circular in the sense of waste is food. Our technosphere tends to be more linear, that is to say that we manufacture products and discard them when we do not need them anymore. Such a behavior creates a lot of waste and depletes our Mother Earth. The so-called circular economy must stop this behavior. The main activities to eliminate waste are according to the butterfly. Share, maintain and prolong. Reuse and redistribute. Refurbishing and remanufacturing. And finally, recycle the materials. Another strategy is to shift to sustainable materials in the biosphere. In terms of LCA, there are two issues. First, recycle nutrients, and second, make use of the recycling of biogenic carbon dioxide, the so-called short cycle in nature via the air, since Mother Nature absorbs what it emits. Therefore, biogenic carbon dioxide is not counted in LCA, which is an IPCC decision that makes a lot of sense. In LCA, there are three different approaches for three different types of recycling systems. There is the so-called closed-loop upcycling. This is the case when a manufacturer takes back its own products after end of life to produce similar products from that end consumer waste. This process can basically be done endlessly when the product is upcycled, although in practice there are always some losses in the circular business model. In contrast with the closed loop, we have in LCA also open loop recycling. Open loop recycling occurs when the waste is entering the waste trading business, then upcycled and used by unknown parties for other product types. This type of recycling is common for metals. In contrast to upcycling in open loop, there is a form of recycling that is called downcycling. At each recycling loop, the functional material quality is degrading, so the value of the material is cascading down. An example is concrete. Product A is concrete with natural gravel. Product B is concrete with an aggregate of crushed concrete. Product C is crushed concrete under a road. The simple classical LCA calculations seem to be linear, as is shown in this slide, but that is misleading. However, when you start with waste, sort it and recycle it instead of starting with mining, you're basically working in a circular economy. In the case of this diagram, it is open loop recycling, since you recycle from product type A to product type B. When you shift the boundaries of your system, you have closed loop recycling from product A to product A. The situation for remanufacturing is basically the same. It can be done in a closed loop as well as in an open loop. In other words, LCA can be done for linear systems as well as circular systems. It is only a matter of system definition. Specific calculation rules are maintenance is part of the main life cycle, reuse is also part of the main life cycle, the eco burden of production is allocated to the subsequent users according to the economic value, so called economic allocation. For refurbishing and remanufacturing, a new life cycle is started. Part of the eco burden of the old product is carried over to the new product according economic allocation. 
For open loop upcycling, the original manufacturer gets neither any benefit of recycling, nor is there any carryover from the old product to the new product via the waste. This is the so-called cutoff at the stockpile of waste. The new product starts therefore with eco cost zero. Downcycling goes from waste to waste. No carryover, which means cut off at the waste stockpile. In LCA, we have a system bonus for closed loop recycling called recycling credit. This can be calculated by the so called system expansion. The basic idea is that with recycling, the production of virgin materials is reduced under the assumption that the market demand of the product is not changed. This is called avoided production of virgin material. Since the eco burden of virgin materials is higher than the eco burden of recycled material, the net result less eco burden, so a credit. In eco costs, a credit is negative, so the credit is subtracted. The same applies to materials that can be incinerated with heat recovery or electricity production. Here we have also a situation of avoided energy production. For fossil based plastics, however, the eco burden of incineration is more than the eco burden of the avoided energy production, which is caused by the polluting exhaust gases. So, incineration of fossil plastics does not have negative eco costs, since there is not a credit but a debit. Incineration of fossil plastics is harmful for the environment. For bioproducts like wood and bamboo, the eco burn of the incineration is less than that of the avoided energy, since biogenic carbon dioxide is not counted. So, incineration with heat recovery of wood, bamboo, and bioplastics have a credit of negative eco costs. The same applies for compost from natural materials like grass, leaves, and algae. It results in avoided production of fertilizers. Composting of biodegradable plastics, however, does not have a credit since these biodegradable plastics do not contain nutrients. The eco cost of composting biodegradable plastics is therefore zero. It's a better idea to burn them with heat recovery since that has a credit. The IDMET app 2020 tables have credit data for upcycling of plastics, upcycling of bioplastics, composting and fermentation, waste handling activities, as well as upcycling of metals and eco cost data for burning with heat recovery. Most people in the business sector of metals are rather enthusiastic about recycling metals. They argue that more than 90% of metal scraps can be recycled, like copper and stainless steel. The reason is twofold. Metals are easy to upcycle, and metals are rather expensive, so there is a financial incentive to recycle. However, do not forget the following. Metals are kept in use in our society for approximately 20 years on average. It's mainly used in durable equipment, but the consequence is that we recycle now the metals which were produced 20 years ago. When you look at this PowerPoint sheet, you see that the current world production of these metals is much more than 20 years ago. So, we recycle only 40% of the current demand of copper and stainless steel. What we do in LCA is that we look at materials we use in a new product. The input of our production process rather than the recycling potential in the far future at the end of life. In practice, the input of our current production processes is the market mix of virgin materials and recycled materials. In normal cases, you don't even know the origin of the materials, so we take the global average market mix in LCA. In our example, 60% virgin, 40% recycled. When you produce in the circular economy and you recycle your own product, you also have to do with the real ratio at the beginning of your production process. When you have a product with market growth, you need an additional flow of market mix metals, additional to your own recycling. 
In LCA, there are two approaches. Common practice in Quix X and T calculations is that we take the virgin or market mix materials as input and use the recycling credit as benefit at the end of life for closed loop recycling. In doing so, we are in fact replacing the virgin materials of the input by recycled materials. In our previous slide, we concluded that such an approach is far from accurate, especially in cases of growth of production. It is much more accurate when we take the actual recycled content at the input side of our calculation. This is as you should do in ex post LCAs. The cutoff point in your calculation is then the stockpile of recyclable waste. Your calculation of the recycled secondary material starts here, and as a consequence, your calculation of the product chain stops at the stockpile of its waste. There is neither a carryover of eco burn from the old product to the new product, nor the other way around. The IDMAT tables have data for recycled secondary materials as well, so if you have the exact recycled content ratios, use these data. LCA calculations in the biosphere are often a bit complicated, since the biosphere often has systems that produce multi-products, for instance in agriculture. The problem is how to distribute the environmental impacts between the main product and the co-products. The solution is called economic allocation. Let's take the example of a sheep. It produces wool, meat and leather. In module 1, block 2, we looked at the eco-burden of a sheep. The issue is how much of that eco-burden is to be allocated in the wool, the meat and the leather. That allocation can be done on the basis of kilograms, volume or another physical property, but the most accepted idea is economic allocation on the basis of the sales price. In this case, 50% of the eco cost is allocated to the wool, 45% to the meat and 5% to the leather. At the end of this module on LCA, I would like to summarize what you might do with LCA. You have five areas of opportunities to create a more sustainable world. First, raw materials, where material selection is paramount. Issues are the switch from virgin to recycled, the switch to less energy intensive or more bio-based. Second is cleaner production, with less energy, less pollution, less chemicals and less waste. Third is the use phase, with less heat by better insulation, less electricity by more efficiency, and a shift from fossil to renewables. The fourth is transport, shorter, less weight, less volume, less fossil fuels, and less pollution of exhaust gases. The fifth and last is disposal, less hazardous materials, longer product lifespans, more remanufacturing and recycling. I will show you in the third and fourth module of this course what that might mean in terms of circular business models and in terms of product innovation. Now you are asked to do your third and fourth assignment. The third is to compare a few alternatives at the end of life of products. The fourth is to compare a rechargeable battery versus a single-use alkaline one. Well. I will wish you a fine learning experience with these assignments and I hope that you join the next module on the issues of material scarcity and critical raw materials and you can calculate that in LCA. For more information read the book A Practical Guide to LCA for Students, Designers and Business Managers Cradle to Grave and Cradle to Cradle.